It's 11 p.m. and these are today's top stories. The President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, received Secretary of the Central Committee of the Palestinian Movement, Fat Hajibri Rajul. Algeria, the commitment of ensuring the right to quality health care is being embodied with the construction of several modern health institutions and hospitals. Algeria is devoting its membership within the UN Security Council to reinforcing Africa's voice to ensure peace and security and effective diplomacy. In the occupied Palestine, the Zionist barbarism continue. The Algerian television is capturing all these crimes, crimes that are even targeting journalists for providing the truth. Why, first of all, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, received the Lieutenant General Jibri Rajoub, Secretary of the Central Committee of the Palestinian Movement, Fatah. The Algerian side who attended the audience was composed of the Chief of Staff of the People's National Army, Army General Saeed Shingriha, the Acting Principal Private Secretary of the Presidency of the Republic, Bu'alam Bu'alam, the Director General of Internal Security, Major Jamal Khal and the Secretary General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Runaz Magramans. On the Palestinian side, Ahmed Majalani, member of the Executive Committee of the Palestinian Liberation Organization and the Ambassador of the State of Palestine to Algeria, Faiz Abu Aita, were present. After being received by the President of the Republic, the Secretary of the Central Committee of the Palestinian Movement, Fatah, affirmed his trust in Algeria on all matters relating to the Palestinian cause as a source of providing capability to Palestinian people in establishing an independent, fully sovereign Palestinian state with Al-Quds al-Sharif as its capital. Let's have a listen. We we are a Palestinian delegation here on behalf of the Palestinian Liberation Organization amid these dire circumstances that our Palestinian people is living in face of the Zionist aggressions directly targeting the state and independence projects in our land. What is happening in Gaza is the latest in the world of crime and terrorism and constitutes a disgrace for humanity. As Palestinians, we have always seen that Algeria is a great country with its people and government under the leadership of the President Abdel Majid Tabun. As a delegation of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, we are here to convey a message to the people of Algeria and its president, which states that our hope and trust in you remains the same as Algeria has always been a great support for Palestine and its path towards freedom. Despite the different challenges, Algeria has always been the host and innovator. Algeria is the source of providing all the reasons and means to protect our project, which was, is, and will remain the project of establishing an independent Palestinian state with full sovereignty, with Al-Quds as its capital, and solving the refugee problem in accordance with the resolutions of international legitimacy. The Major General Jibril Rajoub underlined the hope and trust the Palestinians have in Algeria to put an end to division. We hope and trust that this country with its great people and president will lend a hand to us in this stage by helping with its set objectives, which first of them is making an end to this division. As a member of the Fatah Party, I am proud to say here from Algeria that we, the Fatah Party, are an extension of the Algerian Liberation Front patriotism. This patriotism testified by our great people and martyrs on top of them, Yasser Arafat in Palestine, was and still and will always be the example and the national legitimacy portal for all Palestinians. We say to our brothers in Hamas, we are at turning point and a big challenge. We need to be united for our liberation after all these sacrifices, torture and crimes inflicted by the occupation. It is time to be united for our liberation. So and from here, in the name of the Palestinian leadership, on its head, the brother Abu Mazin and Palestine.
Liberation Organization's Executive Committee. I invite them to come and build a political approach related to the state project and build a militant approach that is related to a strategic choice capable of reaping these achievements which includes a shift in the position of the world which has come to believe in the Palestinian state and its establishment is a necessity to achieve regional stability. The Secretary of the Central Committee of the Palestinian Movement, Fatah, called on the various Palestinian factions to have an agreement under the auspices of Algeria, which has no interest and is not a subject to any extortion, and which aims to end the division and develop a roadmap that leads to holding free and fair elections. Let's have a listen. Today, we are telling our brothers in Hamas and the Islamic Jihad movement that the ball is in the arena. Come with a patriotic decision and Palestinian determination so that we can agree under the Algerian flag, which is also the flag of Palestine. Algeria, which has no interest and is not subject to anyone's blackmail, neither in the Middle East region nor outside it. Let us end division and build a roadmap which paves the way for the holding of free national elections. We say to everyone, we say to our people here in Algeria, this occupation and this aggression must go. Stopping the aggression is the first step to building a Palestinian national government, a government for all the Palestinians, but a government that takes care of all the Palestinian lands, Gaza, the West Bank and Jerusalem. A government that is able to assume its responsibilities, but after the Zionist withdrawal from the Gaza Strip and lifting of the siege on the Gaza Strip and linking this effort to an international conference to end the suffering of the Palestinian people and the besiegement of this occupation. This government will have clear tasks and specific references, and one of these tasks is to prepare the people of Palestine for the holding of democratic and free elections to build partnerships in all components of the Palestinian national political system. We must not make mistakes and we must realize that it is a national choice at this stage and the choice of our respect and appreciation for the sacrifices of our martyred people. 50% of the victims in Gaza are children, 30% are women and the elderly. It is time to move on and look forward. We convey this message to the President of the Algerian Republic and to the Algerian people. The President conveyed us a one clear message, which states that the year 2024, in God willing, will be the year of the establishment of the Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital. Algeria was and will remain biased, without conditions and without accepting any foreign interference with Palestine, with the Palestinian decision, as well as with the determination of the Palestinian people. Lieutenant General Jibril Rajoub, Secretary of the Central Committee of the Palestinian Movement, FAT, expressed his hope of the year of 2024 being a year of ending the occupation, especially with Algeria's voice and membership within the UN Security Council. Our decision must remain emanating from our society and consistent with our aspirations and confronting this occupation and those who have an interest in the continuation of this occupation in perpetuating the division that is an integral to the politics of this country and does not serve its interests. In the name of my brother, Dr. Ahmed Majdalani, who is member of the Executive Committee in the PLO, Dr. Sami Rivey, who left for health reasons, and our ambassador, who is an example of the suffering of the Palestinians and who buried a hundred of his relatives. Thank you and your people, and thank you to this great president. We pray that the year 2024 will be the end of the occupation and the establishment of our state. We have high hopes in Algeria joining the Security Council in the start of the year. Algeria, which was a witness and a partner and in 1974, the president Houari Boumedien and Bouteflika took us to the United Nations and in the 80s united us here. And in 1988, we made our strategic decision by announcing the independence in the Exhibition Palace in Algiers. And we pray God we will announce the union of our people and leadership and a political system and the Palestinian Geographic Union soon by Algeria's efforts and leadership. Thank you. Thank you. قيادة الجزائر وشكرا
Algeria is moving confidently on the path of construction, and today it is proudly enumerating the achievements made for the benefit of citizens, who are at the top of the priorities in all programs, ensuring the citizens' right to quality health is an embodiment of the commitments of the President of the Republic in achieving an integrated and modern health system. More details with Wani Bahri. Je me suis engagé pour un grand statut de comme vous le méritez. Inch'Allah, étant donné tout ce que vous avez vécu, au sauvetage, vous avez sauvé le pays. A few months ago, women were suffering from breast cancer and traveled long distances to receive treatment. Today, the distance has decreased and suffering as well. After the cancer control hospital in Jilfa province entered into service, a health edifice that has given new hope to women in Jilfa province and neighboring provinces. This strategic and important sector was supported by hospital institutions operating according to international standards in many provinces of the country, such as the Major Burns Hospital in Zeralda municipality in the capital Algiers. The interest in the health sector was culminated in an Algerian-Qatari-German partnership to establish a hospital with international specifications that reflects the state's endeavor to develop the quality of health services and expand its reach to the largest possible number of patients in a 400 beds hospital with 20 operating rooms and 60 intensive care beds. Great interest in hospital institutions accompanied by special attention to improve on the professional and financial conditions of the sector's employees. What was achieved in the health sector in the last four years was thanks to the integrated strategy that didn't ignore any sector that could enhance these achievements. And the special care was given to the pharmaceutical industry sector. And the best evidence of this is the number of pharmaceutical institutions in 2019, which reached 96 institutions. Only four years have made this sector undergo radical transformation, thanks to the comprehensive vision of the President of the Republic. The first fruits of this transformation appeared at the height of the COVID-19 crisis, as Algeria was able to produce the coronavirus vaccine, which made it immune to the bargaining of the countries that manufactured the vaccine, after which the achievements continued, making Algeria one of the countries importer of medicines to a country that exports many different types of them. The health sector has enabled many achievements and gains, the most important of which is improving health services, digitization and providing health security in response to the aspirations of citizens. With the agreement of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, the Minister of Interior, Local Authorities and Regional Planning has made a reshuffle within the body of Inspectors General of the Provinces, Directors of Regulation and General Affairs and Directors of Local Administration. Concerning the Provinces Inspectors General, this movement affects 18 positions as follows. Appointment of seven executives as Provinces Inspectors General. Nine managers were transferred to other provinces as inspectors general. Retirement of 22 inspectors general. Concerning the directors of regulation and general affairs, this movement affected 27 positions distributed as follows. Seven managers promoted to this position, transfer of 17 directors to other provinces, and the factions of three managers to take up other duties. This movement, which is based on the principle of continuous assessment and merit, is part of the efforts to give an impetus to the administrative services and to include young managers and women, encouraging them to take on management positions.
In other news, the UN 10 seminar proceedings have begun this Sunday with the objective of achieving African peace and security. An effective African diplomacy is discussed in the seminar presided by the Foreign Affairs Minister Ahmed Attaf. Najah Tayar has the details. Algeria has reaffirmed its firm determination to defend the values of unity and solidarity and the interests of Africa in all fields. At the opening session of the 10th high-level seminar on peace and security in Africa, Algeria pledged to strengthen the African continent's influence in decision-making on related issues on the basis of common positions based on the principles and ideals enshrined in the Constitutive Charter of the African Union. <laughs> Algeria, under the leadership of the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Taboun, believes that the completion of the African Integration and Unity Project must be accompanied by practical and effective measures that will enable our continent to position itself as an influential player in the process of restoring global balances while defining the characteristics of the system, a new international community in which the voice of our continent will be heard, its security guaranteed and will play an effective role in the international decision-making process. The aim of Iran process is to strengthen the African Union in the face of the many challenges facing the continent, with a view to finding effective solutions to these problems. I see that Iran process is a good opportunity to strengthen good understanding and consolidate the joint and multilateral work and reinforce international partnerships capable of responding to all the challenges facing Africa. The Africa we aspire to must focus on achieving peace, security and sustainable development. It is important for this meeting to be a platform for realizing Africa's vision for 2063. The Oran process consolidates Algeria's active role in coordinating the efforts of the African countries and defending the interests and aspirations of the African nations. On the sidelines of its participation in the works of the high-level seminar on peace and security in Africa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community, Abad Ahmed Attaf, had several bilateral talks with its counterparts from Sierra Leone, Nigeria and Tunisia, an opportunity to examine the relations of cooperation and fraternity which link Algeria to these countries as well as the, to evaluate one process aimed at the unification of the African position within the Security Council. The situation in Gaza is getting worse by each day. The health system collapsed, while the few operational hospitals are incapable of providing the necessary health care. The occupation forces attacked the Kamal Adwan Hospital. Civilians were buried alive. The Euro Mediterranean Human Rights Observatory urges for an international investigation. Yassin Hamdi. The Euro-Mediterranean Human Rights Observatory urges for an independent international investigation regarding information about Palestinians buried alive in the Kamal Adwan Hospital courtyard in Beit Lahia, North Gaza. Après la retraite de l'armée de l'occupation, when the occupation army left the Kamal Adwan Hospital, it appeared that they buried alive the injured Palestinians in the courtyard. Some of them were shot. The Euro-Mediterranean Observatory received testimonies and complaints from the medical staff and journalists who affirmed that tanks entered the hospital, causing its destruction and the burial of innocent civilians alive. There are pictures and proofs. The smell of corpses attracted the journalists. The families were looking for their wounded, but they didn't find them until they recognized their clothes. They have been buried alive. More than 20 corpses of Palestinians crushed by tanks were found. The hospitals in Gaza are going through a catastrophic situation. They can't take care of the wounded because of the lack of material, in addition to the Zionist army that destroys hospitals without respecting human rights and violating the war laws. The emergency service of a Shifa hospital was bombed and destroyed. 
According to the World Health Organization, the biggest Palestinian hospital needs help. The medical staff keeps calling for the immediate stop of attacks on hospitals. We are reaching the point of no return where blatant disregard for international humanitarian law scars our collective consciousness. This includes 24 different hospitals that have been bombed by Israel, over 100 ambulances that have been put out of service. Israel has arrested dozens of doctors. Their whereabouts remain unknown. The Gaza hospitals are destroyed. The surgery rooms are completely out of service because of the lack of oxygen. There are no incubators for newborns. According to the World Health Organization, Ahli is the only partially operational hospital in the north of Gaza. New developments concerning the International Criminal Court's investigations into the Zionist entity's crimes in Gaza. According to the lawyer Gilles Diver, the team appointed by the ICC prosecutor is actively pursuing its work and has already met twice with representatives of the lawyer's collective who filed the complaint against the Zionist entity on November 9. An unprecedented first step in the history of ICC, the lawyer also expressed his optimism and recalled the slowness of ICC. ICC proceedings, citing previous crimes as an example, noting that the collective behind the complaint is working to gather as much evidence and testimony as possible concerning the crimes of genocide against Palestinian civilians. Morocco's ambassador now to Warsaw, Abdurrahim Atmoun, has been interrogated by the Belgian police as part of the investigation related to the European Parliament corruption scandal, in which the Maghzen regime is deeply involved. According to RTBF, other people were also auditioned for being involved in this corruption scandal. The Belgian investigators from the central office for the repression of corruption were accompanied on site by an investigating judge and by a federal prosecutor, and four days carried out various investigations tasks. Moroccan bribes to MEPs are of a significant number indeed. Taking the example of bribing, bribing Belgian lawyers who observed an implementation take trial of the Sahawi prisoners for Gdim Zik group in Morocco. The Belgian channel RTBF shed the light on these dishonest practices by Moroccan diplomacy on Friday. The trial dates back to 2017 and was marked by serious irregularities. It concerned 25 Sahawi activists sentenced in 2013 to prison terms of up to life sentence. All right, that was it for today's news. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.